Now to our next item of business, which is a statement by Shona Robertson on the UK Supreme Court judgment on minimum unit pricing of alcohol in Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I would encourage uh, all members who wish to speak, or who wish to ask a question rather, to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It is with very great pleasure that I come to Parliament today to make my statement on minimum unit pricing of alcohol in Scotland. Members will know that on Wednesday, the 15th of November, the UK Supreme Court handed down a unanimous judgment rejecting the legal challenge to our pioneering legislation. The judgment was a resounding endorsement of our approach, which was approved unopposed by this Parliament in 2012. The Supreme Court bench, comprising seven justices, including uh, Lady Hale, the newly appointed president of the court, and her predecessor, Lord Neuberger, concluded that minimum unit pricing was targeted, proportionate, and lawful. The Scottish courts had already reached this conclusion on two separate occasions. We now have the decision of the UK Supreme Court, and I'm delighted that the case has been finally decided in our favour. As the present carrier of the baton on minimum unit pricing, with Kenny McCaskill, Nicola Sturgeon and Alec Neill preceding me, it is a privilege for me to make this landmark statement to the Scottish Parliament. There has been tremendous support for the policy over the last decade from an array of organisations and businesses, including within the alcohol industry. SHAP, the Scottish Health Action on Alcohol Problems and Alcohol Focus Scotland, were often at the forefront and today I wish to pay particular tribute to Dr Evelyn Gillen, who sadly passed away in 2015. In her role as Chief Executive of Alcohol Focus Scotland, Evelyn was a passionate advocate for minimum unit pricing. Today I remember her lasting contribution to Scottish public life and I feel extremely proud to have worked alongside her. I have overseen the majority of the litigation at the Court of Session in Edinburgh, the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg and the UK Supreme Court in London. Throughout, I had absolute certainty that our case was supported by evidence and policy analysis of the highest calibre. Some MSPs in this chamber had differing views on minimum unit pricing in the past. However, I welcome supportive commentary from across the benches these last few days and I'll shortly outline the next steps towards implementation. As I do, I hope that all members will act in the spirit of consensus and get behind minimum unit pricing. My justification for seeking parliamentary consensus is about more than warm words. Given the high and enduring levels of alcohol-related harm Scotland experiences, I believe the electorate deserves no less than a chamber which unites to tackle the scourge of cheap, high-strength alcohol causing so much damage across our nation. I expect I need not remind members that alcohol misuse costs Scotland 3.6 billion each year, 900 pounds for every adult. Presiding officer, you need not cast your net far to see at first hand the devastation caused by alcohol misuse. Published only this morning, the annual NHS hospital statistics tell us that there were 36,235 alcohol related hospital admissions in 2016-17 an increase of 2% on the previous year. In August, we learned that there had been 1,265 alcohol-related deaths in 2016, an increase of 10% on 2015. And behind every statistic is an individual, a family and a community. On average, alcohol misuse causes about 697 hospital admissions and 24 deaths a week in Scotland. So let me be clear, this is wholly unacceptable. And of course, we've never claimed that minimum unit pricing is a panacea. Our alcohol framework is comprehensive and has attracted international acclaim. It contains more than 40 measures across the prevention and support spectrum. Much of this work remains ongoing, and we plan a refresh of the strategy shortly to build on our achievements to date. Since 2008, we've invested over £689 million to tackle problem alcohol and drug use. Furthermore, our recent programme for government commits an additional £20 million per year for alcohol and drug services subject to parliamentary approval through the budget process. Our commitment to providing treatment and recovery support is absolute and the Minister for Public Health and Sport, Aileen Campbell, intends to update Parliament shortly on our plans for reinvigorating the approach to alcohol and drugs treatment. 
There can be no doubt that Scotland pays a high price for alcohol-related harm, and that's precisely why government has an obligation to intervene in the market in order to set a minimum unit price. The benefits of minimum unit pricing will be substantial. As an illustration, last year Sheffield University modelled that a price per unit of 50 pence would lead to 58 fewer alcohol-related deaths in the first year, with a cumulative total of 392 fewer alcohol-related deaths within the first five years. The reduction in alcohol-related hospital admissions at that price would be similarly substantial. In the first year, a price of 50 pence would lead to 1,299 fewer alcohol-related hospital admissions, with a cumulative total of 8,254 fewer alcohol-related hospital admissions within the first five years. Presiding officer, I'll now turn to my plans for implementation. Minimum pr unit pricing of alcohol has been delayed far too long. During the court cases, lives have been lost, and that's why I will move to implement as soon as is practicable. I'm delighted to confirm that I am today laying a commencement order, bringing into immediate force the order-making provisions of the Alcohol Minimum Pricing Scotland Act 2012. I intend to consult on our draft Scottish statutory instrument, which sets the minimum unit price, and I'll begin that consultation on the 1st of December. The consultation will run for eight weeks until the 26th of January 2018. We'll then work swiftly to ensure that the order setting the minimum unit price is laid before Parliament on the 1st of March 2018. That order will state our intended implementation date for minimum unit pricing of alcohol in Scotland, that is the 1st of May 2018. Presiding officer, following the appropriate parliamentary scrutiny and assuming that this Parliament votes to bring the price setting order into force, no alcohol in Scotland will then be sold for less than the specified minimum unit price from the 1st of May 2018. I anticipate setting the minimum unit price at 50 pence per unit subject to the outcome of our consultation and a refreshed business regulatory impact assessment, the BRIA. A consultation is necessary to meet the requirements of European food regulations. And given the time that has elapsed since this parliament passed the legislation, I'm keen to consult stakeholders and the public on our preferred price. The BRIA plays an important role in explaining the impact of our legislation. So it's vital that it's up to date and reflects the consultation outcomes. We want to hear from retailers about the practicalities of implementation. And we're already talking to representative bodies and we'll uh, convene a retailers implementation group in December. We'll also engage next month with licensing standards officers who enforce Scotland's liquor licensing laws day in, day out, to hear their views. The Supreme Court judgment was comprehensive and included consideration of the sunset clause, which this parliament approved in 2012. This means Scottish ministers will bring to Parliament an evaluation of the impact of the policy five years on. Parliament will then vote on the policy's continuation before the sixth year of operation. It's well known that NHS Health Scotland is conducting this independent and objective evaluation following its excellent track record of evaluating alcohol policy in Scotland over the last decade. Industry will be involved in that evaluation. Presiding officer, earlier this morning, I discussed moving forwards with Karen Betts, the new chief executive at the Scotch Whiskey Association. Karen has confirmed to me that the SWA will pay the Scottish government's costs in the court cases, and I welcome that very much. We are agreed that a line must be drawn under the litigation. The whiskey industry remains a very important part of Scotland's heritage and indeed its future. It brings many benefits to our country, including employment, often in remote and rural areas, and of course, tourism. There are many challenges ahead for the whisky industry, and particularly from the uncertainties of Brexit. And this government will continue to work with the sector, including the SWA, to advocate for decisions which benefit the Scottish economy. This court case was always about compliance with European law and whether public health arguments should ultimately win out over trade. The European Court of Justice concluded that the ultimate decision on minimum pricing was for the domestic courts. Fellow nations are interested in following in our footsteps. The Welsh Government introduced a minimum unit pricing bill to the National Assembly for Wales last month. Ireland looks set to do the same. And I wish Wales and Ireland all the best with tackling alcohol-related harm in their own jurisdictions. 
Presiding officer, I will conclude by reflecting on one of the most important parts of the UK Supreme Court judgment on minimum unit pricing of alcohol. The Supreme Court sets out the approach which the court should take in a challenge to a policy decision of this sort by the government and parliament. The court's judgment tells us that in considering the question of public health benefits versus free trade, it is for the government and parliament to decide what weight is placed upon, upon public health harms. I quote from paragraph 63 of the judgment. That was a judgment which it was for them to make and their right to make it mitigates strongly against intrusive review by a domestic court. This is a very important decision for public health policy generally. The power to act, to minimise public health harms, to change unhealthy cultures, to give our children the best start in life lies in all of our hands. Next May, we'll take a huge step forward in tackling one of Scotland's enduring health harms. Minimum unit pricing of alcohol can help to turn the tide on alcohol harm. And the 1st of May will be a landmark moment. Thank you very much. And we move to questions, starting with Jackson Carlo. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I unreservedly welcome and associate the Scottish Conservatives with the statement the Cabinet Secretary has just made? It is actually quite extraordinary in some ways to think that it's five and a half years since I stood as a Conservative health spokesman in support of this legislation. And I would like to recall that although they had won a significant overall majority in the Scottish election in 2011, the front bench of the day, nonetheless, in support of this policy, were prepared to reach out to other parties and supported two conditions Scottish Conservatives attached at that time. One was that the legislation was legal, and I think it's perhaps taken a lot longer than any of us imagined for us to get to the point where we can unreservedly say that is so. But the second was in support of my amendment introducing a sunset clause. Uh, and this is terribly important because contentious pieces of public health legislation uh, will, I think, enjoy greater uh, ease of support within Parliament if those who are sceptical, and some were, know that there is going to be an evaluation process. Now, I hear what the uh, Cabinet Secretary said, but I wonder if she could today agree to ensure that all of the political parties in this Parliament are also involved in agreeing the evaluation process and being a part of that as the legislation proceeds through Parliament. Uh, secondly, she makes reference to the 50 pence unit that was established at the time, and I welcome the consultation she will have surrounding that. She clearly favours 50 pence, I think, at this point. Is she confident that that will, uh, given the length of time there has been in, uh, since the legislation was passed, be an appropriate level for minimum unit pricing? And does she intend at any point over the uh, five-year evaluation process uh, to put in place criteria that would allow for that limit to be reviewed if that was felt to be necessary? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I thank uh, Jackson Carlaw for, first of all, his supportive comments and uh, at the time for, for uh, his, his support of, of what was groundbreaking and at times, obviously, controversial uh, proposals. And so that was very welcome. And as he has recognised, the, the Sunset Clause was an important part and was cited in court as being very important as well. So I thank him. For that. In terms of the evaluation process, the evaluation board will uh, involve um, a number of stakeholders, including industry. And this morning I offered uh, the Scotch Whiskey Association a seat on that board uh, and they will reflect upon that. In terms of opposition involvement, I'm certainly happy to give that further consideration and talk to the opposition spokespeople about how that is best facilitated. In terms of the 50p um, uh, being appropriate, yeah, well, that is our preferred uh, minimum unit price and that is what we will consult upon. But given five years has elapsed, it is important that we hear uh, views uh, on that. But all of the modelling that Sheffield University has done has been based on the 50 pence proposal. Uh, in terms of moving forward, um, Jackson Carlow will be aware that should we want uh, to amend the minimum unit price at a later stage, uh, once the evaluation um, and, the, and the benefits of, of the policy, um, I'm sure, will be shown, then of course we would have to come back to Parliament uh, in order to do that. Uh, so I am keen to get on uh, with the implementation. I've laid that out in my statement, the time frame for that. Uh, and I look forward to having Jackson Carlaw's support and hopefully that from across the chamber. Thank you. Colin Smith to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank, thank you, President Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. 
President, officer, the Supreme Court ruling was very clear, as was the decision of Parliament five years ago, and the Cabinet Secretary has helpfully set out in today today in detail the next stages so, so I look forward to supporting those next stages and engaging constructively in the process as it goes forward to full implementation. The Cabinet Secretary referred to the publication today of the, the annual NHS hospital statistics and she'll know that they reveal that alcohol related hospital admissions for 2016-17 were eight times higher among people from the most deprived communities. In the psychiatric setting for 2015-16, the difference was even more pronounced with just over 15 times as many people being admitted from the most deprived areas. I welcome the commitment in the Cabinet Secretary's statement today to publish a refreshed alcohol framework, hopefully this year. But will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that when it is published, the undeniable link between deprivation and higher levels of alcohol abuse is not only recognised, but clear action is included to tackle what is yet another health inequality caused by wealth inequality. Well, the Cabinet Secretary also recognised the impact on people faced with an addiction problem of the recent 24% reduction in funding to alcohol and drug partnerships, which by definition have hit the poorest and the most deprived communities hardest, and will ensure that the refreshed strategy at the very least changes and reverses that reduction in funding. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I thank Colin Smith for uh, his questions and uh, look forward to him engaging constructively uh, in the process going forward. Uh, Colin Smith uh, cites a, a number of statistics which show that the impact of alcohol misuse does fall disproportionately on those most uh, deprived communities and he cited uh, the, the, the figures uh, around hospital admissions and, uh, and the impact uh, of alcohol uh, misuse. Um, the, he cited the, the framework which will, the refresh framework will uh, be available in the, the new year and uh, I'm sure from that it will set a, a clear uh, direction of travel and a, a clear further action that can be taken, building on the substantial action that has already been taken. And of course, the, the work on brief interventions, which has been uh, very, very successful in helping people to address their uh, alcohol-related problems. In terms of resourcing, uh, Colin Smith will be aware that uh, there is a 20 million commitment in the programme for government, obviously subject to the budget process. Uh, that, will be, that will involve additional spend on alcohol and drug services. It's important though that, that the spend of that money is related to the evidence of what works best and that will therefore be set out in the, uh, the framework, but also some of the, the information that uh, Aileen Campbell uh, will be sharing with Parliament around the uh, alcohol and drug uh, treatment uh, proposals that she will be bringing forward. So I hope uh, that, that we will have the support of Colin Smith and others in terms of securing this within the budget process because it is important uh, in terms of uh, taking matters forward. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you very much. I very much welcome the statement and the Supreme Court judgment. The Greens are the only opposition party that has consistently supported this policy since its inception. And now that the legal arguments have been proved right, I agree that it's time to press on and demonstrate that the policy itself can be effective. The Cabinet Secretary tells us that in the evaluation process, the industry will be involved. Does she agree that the industry itself is not homogenous and that we should be listening rather less to the giant drinks multinationals who can afford to employ lawyers and lobbyists but who make their profits from volume sales and mass manufacture and we should be listening rather more to the independent businesses, the independent producers, the smaller ones who make a living not a killing uh, but whose profitability is based on quality uh, rather than on mass manufacture uh, and cheap promotions. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank Patrick Harvey uh, for him and his party's consistent support of minimum unit pricing. Uh, he refers to the, the alcohol industry um, having differing views and of course that is true and sections of the alcohol industry have supported minimum unit pricing uh, over, over the years and that is to be welcomed. Uh, he makes an important point uh, around the distinction of uh, some of the, the manufacturers of, of high quality products. Uh, the target of minimum unit pricing, as we have always said, is, has never been those premium quality products. It has always been those uh, low price, high alcohol content 
content uh, products which can be as low as 18 pence uh, per unit. Those are the products that are absolutely within the sites of minimum unit pricing. So going forward, we uh, hope that we will have the, the support of many sections of the alcohol industry. And as I said in my statement, it is important to draw a line uh, under the issue of litigation and we hope that uh, the Scottish Whiskey Association uh, uh, and the Scottish Government will be able to reset the relationship going forward because we have many areas uh, of common cause. Willie Rennie to be followed by Alex Neil. Uh, I was increasingly sceptical that this day would ever come and depressed um, over that period of time as well because we were fully supportive of the measure. But since we've come so far wouldn't it be advisable to follow on from what Jackson Carlow was saying, to revise the price <coughs> level? It was 50 pence we set before. Would it not be more suitable to set something in the order of 60 pence to reflect the, the inflation and also other factors that have changed in that very long march towards delivery of this policy? Right, Secretary. Uh, well, it's going to say to Willie Rennie, um, I, I was confident that this day would come, uh, but uh, it has been a long haul, but here we are. Uh, he, Willie Rennie asks about the, the price level. Now, as I said in my statement, uh, we are going to consult, and obviously we will hear the views of that consultation, uh, but we believe that there is uh, very much a, a lot of evidence um, uh, for maintaining the 50 pence uh, price. That is what we will uh, consult on. And if you look at the modelling that has been done uh, by Sheffield University, it states out very clearly the, the public health gains from setting a, a price of 50 pence. So yes, we will listen uh, to the consultation responses, but uh, that consultation will uh, go out with a, still advocating the Scottish Government's position of, of a 50 pence minimum unit price. Thank you. We have about 10 more questions, if we can squeeze them in. Alec Neill to be followed by Miles Briggs. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I first of all congratulate the Scottish Government on persevering with this issue for the last five years and for the plans of a swift implementation? Can I also welcome the commitment by the Scottish Whiskey Association that they will pay the taxpayer back all the legal costs involved in this unnecessary and irresponsible action that they have taken. And I would encourage the government to make sure they recover every penny in those costs. But can I also point out that as a result of the Scotch Whiskey Association's uh, action over the last five years, based on the estimates provided by Sheffield University, nearly 400 people in Scotland have died unnecessarily and avoidably uh, as a result of this action. Had this legislation been implemented five years ago, about 392 people uh, would still have probably been alive. Now, we can't undo what's already happened, but can I press the Cabinet Secretary to say to the Scotch Whiskey Association that repaying the legal costs is not enough Given the vast profits they make every year in Scotland, they should be investing heavily in those communities particularly adversely affected by the alcohol abuse problem. They owe those communities a lot after their irresponsible behaviour. We should make sure they pay those people as well as our legal costs. Cabinet Secretary. First of all, can I uh, recognise Alec Newell's uh, contribution to getting where we have got to today uh, when he was Health Secretary. Um, uh, um, all of the, the, the previous Health Secretaries have, have contributed uh, to the position we have, have got to today. Now, uh, Alec Newell um, makes mention of the, the cost recovery and as I said in my statement, uh, the Scotch Whiskey Association have have confirmed uh, that uh, lawyers will uh, be discussing the, the cost recovery process as is normal uh, in these circumstances. Uh, when I meet with Karen Betts, uh, we have agreed to discuss a number of things, uh, and one of which is how the Scotch Whiskey Association can contribute to the public health uh, agenda. Uh, one of the issues that we want to move forward on is, uh, for example, making sure 
sure that the Chief Medical Officer's um, new guidelines uh, are um, produced uh, on uh, alcohol uh, packaging and uh, there is still discussion to be had with the Portman Group uh, around that because uh, they have yet to agree to that. So that is a, a, a step forward that the alcohol industry could collectively take uh, to make sure that the most up-to-date guidelines are there uh, um, very clearly for, for the public's information. Thank you. I just urge members uh, to be very, very brief with their questions if we're to get through them. Miles Briggs to be followed by Ashton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I welcome the clarity we now have in relation to minimum unit pricing, which is estimated could have helped reduce the number of alcohol deaths by around 10%. This would be welcome progress, but will the Cabinet Secretary accept that minimum unit pricing is just one tool in a broad range of measures we need to take as a country to address alcohol misuse in Scotland? And can the Cabinet Secretary give more details of any additional new proposals Proposals the Scottish Government is developing and will she also agree to hold a cross-party summit on alcohol misuse so we can look at the broader cultural changes we need to take as a nation to address Scotland's relationship with alcohol. Cabinet Secretary, I would urge members please, when I say brief questions, I mean one question and keep it brief. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I said in my statement, uh, Eileen Campbell will be making a statement shortly around uh, the uh, uh, substance uh, misuse treatment um, developments and uh, she will be making uh, that statement shortly and of course the framework will be coming back uh, in the, the new year and I'm sure again we can look for a parliamentary opportunity to discuss uh, that further but you know Miles Briggs is right in that we have never argued that minimum unit pricing is a silver bullet or a panacea or whatever other phrase you want to use but it is an important part of the armory, if you like, of things we need to deploy uh, to uh, tackle alcohol misuse because price and consumption are so, um, so linked. I'm happy to write to Miles Briggs with an update in terms of the other frame uh, actions in the framework, over 40, many of them really delivering a, a lot of change, brief interventions, helping people to address their alcohol misuse. Happy to write to him with more of the detail. Uh, Ash Dern to be followed by Mark Griffin. Um, I echo the Cabinet Secretary's sentiments on the devastating impact that alcohol misuse can have on families across Scotland. And of course, minimum pricing is a huge step in the right direction. But it's important to remember that obviously this is not being done in isolation. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline um, other measures that the government is taking and plans to tackle alcohol misuse? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, as I indicated to, to Miles uh, Briggs, we uh, have a, a framework which has over 40 uh, actions. So the framework for action includes uh, regulatory measures such as the quantity discount ban, a ban on irresponsible promotions, lowering the drink driving limit, the introduction of an age verification policy such as Challenge 25. Um, other initiatives include the promotion of smaller measures of wine in the on trade, the best bar none initiatives, and and of course brief interventions as I mentioned earlier so it is important to see that that basket of measures many of which have had a real and tangible benefit um, and you know I think Scotland really leading the way particularly around things like lowering the drink driving limit and it is about changing culture it is about and minimum unit pricing will help to change that culture in the same way as it is no longer acceptable to, to drink and drive, I think we can create a very different culture in our relationship with alcohol here in Scotland. Mark Griffin to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary spoke about the high price uh, Scotland pays for alcohol related harm and the need to intervene in the market. And my region in central Scotland pays a high price for high caffeine content alcohol related harm. Would the, Scot the Scottish Government consider a market intervention in this area as well. Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I say to Mark Griffin, obviously minimum unit price um, in relation to the product that he is talking about wouldn't be affected by minimum unit pricing because the unit pricing is already above the 50 pence. However, that doesn't mean there are not other measures that can be taken uh, around uh, the, the, the products that, that Mark Griffin refers to. Very happy to continue to, to have those discussions, but there's got to be an evidence base for them. I think this process over the last five years has taught us that, that when you bring forward public health policy you've got to have a strong evidence base because if you do end up in the courts it will be that evidence base that will either lead to success or otherwise so when we take forward any public health measures it has to have a strong evidence base but I'm very happy to continue that discussion uh, with Mark Griffin, Griffin and others if there's more we can do in in that respect. 
Fulton McGregor to be followed by Annie Wells. Thank you, President Officer. Given the intricate relationship that can exist for some people between alcohol use and poor mental health, does the Cabinet Secretary expect that minimum unit pricing will have a positive impact on mental health in the longer term, as much, if not more, as, well, as it will on physical health? Oh, and I should uh, remind the Chamber and the Parliamentary Liaison Officer. Apologies. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Um, and that's part of, of changing the, the culture. And we know that for many people with addictions, there is quite often a dual diagnosis of addictions and uh, mental health issues. We also know that part of the Sheffield study covered uh, the mental health impact and the, the reduction in hospital admissions um, that would be a benefit of minimum unit pricing would also be in the area of mental health also, so a lot to be gained uh, by this, and uh, that is just one area. Annie Wills. Thank you. In Scotland, harmful and hazardous binge drinking is increasing amongst those aged 65 to 74, whilst decreasing in other age groups. How will the Scottish Government incorporate age into its alcohol strategies, recognising that older adults' needs may be different from those of younger people? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Annie Wells makes a, a reasonable point that, that actually um, alcohol misuse affects um, the whole population, and that's why our alcohol strategy takes a whole population approach. Um, as we take forward the refresh, I think we should look at uh, the area of, of older people and alcohol. We know, for example, that many of the brief interventions that have been delivered have been for older people who turn up at their, their doctors or A&E with injuries where alcohol misuse may be an underlying factor. So it is very important as we go forward with the refresh of the framework that we do take into account very much the needs of the older people uh, who may well have an alcohol misuse problem. Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. Cabinet Secretary, I listened carefully to your responses to Jackson Carlaw and Willie Rennie. When legislation for the price uh, suggested was 50, when legislated for the price suggested was 50 pence, and five years later this has been eroded significantly by inflation, yet it remains the unit price suggested. Will the Scottish Government uh, reconsider the raising of the minimum unit price in real terms to maintain its effectiveness and link the unit price to inflation to ensure this policy's positive impact in saving lives in the years ahead uh, continues without having to be reconsidered intermittently, as was suggested in your statement. Cabinet Secretary. Um, can I first of all recognise Kenny Gibson's interest uh, in this matter? Um, can I say to him that I, I recognise absolutely what he is saying, uh, but I'm very, very keen to get on now with the implementation and would uh, be very, very cautious about taking any action that could lead to further delay. Uh, that's why we're consulting uh, on the 50p uh, minimum unit price. We will listen, as I've said earlier, to responses to that consultation. But I would be keen, given the evidence base and the modelling has been done on the 50 pence minimum unit price, uh, that we should get on and evaluate the impact of that policy. However, you know, going forward, we will uh, continue to keep that under review and, if necessary, come back to Parliament. And briefly, finally, Ivan McKee. I congratulate the Scottish Government on this policy and I commend those parts of the drinks industry who have consistently supported this policy, including tenants in my own constituency. This policy will reduce the number of people who will develop an alcohol problem. However, for those who already have an alcohol addiction, what additional support will the Government be putting in place to support their recovery? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, Aileen Campbell... Uh uh, will lay out uh, ne next week um, the developments in terms of, of treatment for uh, alcohol and uh, drug addiction and uh, Aileen will be able to lay out more of the detail but you know it is absolutely right and proper that uh, as well as changing the culture and uh, addressing the link between price and consumption and reducing alcohol misuse we have to make sure that people who need help uh, get it as quickly as possible uh, and of course we do have our uh, treatment waiting times which are, are being met for alcohol and drug treatment so people are getting uh, access to the help they need quickly and also the brief interventions which are helping to address people's alcohol misuse at an earlier stage backed up of course the 20 million pounds in the program for government which will help to de deliver uh, further improvements in alcohol uh, and treatment uh, options for people who require them Thank you. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and members for their cooperation? Oh, point of order, Patrick Harvey. 
Forgive me, Presiding Officer, I believe during that last item I should have made an oral declaration of my membership of the cross-party group on beer and brewing. Uh, apologies for the oversight. Thank you, Mr Harvey, for that uh, update. Um, can I thank all members? And we'll move on to the next item of business. I would just ask members, I allowed both the statement and the topical questions to run over quite a bit. So I'm looking for as much consideration, time-saving as possible. Try and keep your member, try and keep your speeches to the allotted time where possible. 